Hello, dear colleagues. <clears throat> uh, my name is Elena Lutsenko. I come from Kyiv, Ukraine. Uh, a lot of you know of me as Managing Director of Retin Ukraine and uh, uh, Retin Blixi region. Uh, first of all, I'm very appreciated to be here today and uh, I'd like to share this, some experience and facts what we already had during the first year of Ukraine and operating network service provider. First of all, I'd like to make this some short introduction about Ukrainian telecommunication market before the war. Uh, during the, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, as of December 2021, uh, the national uh, commissions of uh, state regulation of electronic communication declared that we have uh, already really around 620 uh, operators uh, with revenue total of the year, including of mobile operators, was 221 millions of euro. And our pool, what is surprisingly, we just joked that we have the cheapest internet and fastest internet in Europe. It's less than five euro per 100 meg. We expected, of course, business growing, planning some M&A, but change is coming. minutes I'd like to share the some numbers anyway about 2022 and uh, Retin started to build the own network in 2007 uh, for that moment at uh, more than 6,000 uh, kilometers of lead fiber with uh, 42 presence on net buildings and our 50 amplifier sites why it's important you'll understand the next um, one year ago I was in Kiev I remember these days I will always remember by hours. And uh, first of all, it was very early, we decided uh, to keep the, some emergency metrics and also go on uh, with uh, our team to the list what problems we can have. And uh, we understood that we need to keep Ukrainian telecommunications running as long as possible. Nobody has some experience to be faced with a real war. But we just make this some short list of typical problem what we can have. Yeah, it's fiber cuts and capacity, connectivity, routing, access to pop. And now I can say you that we did not expertise any new type of problems. But the issues were very uh, unprognosed, a lot of times multiplicative, simultaneous and uh, difficult to address given operating environment. So, I'd like to share a few summary data. Uh, it's the first problem was about the fiber cuts and lack of capacity, what we have. And I can say that now, we're just as, uh, speaking with our markets guys, that uh, due to fibers, the March 2022 was the worst month in Ukrainian history of whole telecommunication that we had. And yeah, not so bad, but anyway, almost more than half we have higher amount of fiber cuts as accidents if we compare it with 2021. And what is, was very bad and uh, difficult is that also average time uh, of outages increased uh, most, oh, its average here yeah, during the whole year we just calculated in the end. And uh, of course, for example, I just had a conversation with a guy who was uh, responsible for the recovering of the fiber cuts in Kharkiv region at the eastest, uh, northeastest part of Ukraine. And the guy says that it's more difficult, it's just you uh, starting to splice fiber and shelling starts. People need to find some safer place because Bob shelter is not available on the field. 
And after this, come back, start again, and can Shellen can repeat again. And you never know when it started from where, and it's more difficult for them, and that's why average time to fix everything has a real connection with the people life. Yeah, uh, Q4 were names in our community as Black uh, Quarter 4, 22, because during October, November, and December, we calculated that 635 rockets had been fired for Ukrainian electricity infrastructure. As a result, total number of time of diesel generation our sites during these three months was 3,331 hours. And our sites working on the batteries uh, more than 40% uh, of time during this Q4. Of course, as a result, uh, it was decreased of lifetime of batteries. We always need to, a lot on our warehouse and be ready to replace it very fast. What is also new for, I think everyone knows that it's more difficult, but currently, uh, before the war, it was one day for the delivery anything to Ukraine. It's possible. Now it's seven days and we need to plan it. And uh, more interesting and more, uh, again, uh, need to be planned and controlled, that is curfew. It's, it's, it it's means that there's any movements forbidden on the street around the whole country. And uh, I remember the some uh, time when we have uh, had the some information that there's low battery and we didn't know when it can be again restart the electricity for the nodes. People just go to the cis site and sleep in, waiting if they need to start to work with the diesel generation. But we have last three months that we have uh, incredible result, 100 availability for all our Ukrainian IP customers for the whole across Ukraine, and we are really appreciate. <laughs> Thank you. And, and now um, we are just as very positive people in Ukraine, and uh, our the Ministry of Digitalization already calculated that the losses is around three billion, I think I can say, just as official numbers was publicated. Uh, after eight months. Currently, we have, of course, the constant network recovery as daily routine, and you never have enough physical uh, routes. That's why protection of network. And, of course, business development and network development. It's very important for each operator. And, yeah, one year gave us a lot of lessons. Uh, I can say that we do just the best day each day. And yeah, 100 SLA, as I said before, is possible. And I'd like to uh, introduce Andrei Gazizo, Chief Operational Officer of Retin Globally. He will share it more detailed about the, our challenges and maybe the, some very important uh, feature or life hacks for the, uh, not only survive, but also uh, effective operating of the network service provider. Thank you very much. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Andrei. As uh, Len said, I CEO of Retin uh, globally. And um, I will run through several tips and tricks we've managed to find out during these uh, challenging times for, 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 for the business and for, for the country as a whole. Uh, for those who never heard about us, we, we are NSP with global presence, with a huge presence in Ukraine for, for, for this uh, particular country. So, and as an SP, we are facing with the very same challenges as everyone else in the industry. It's like fiber cuts, pop success, pop size elation sometimes if you are unlucky. Hardware faults, uh, spare management, logistic issues, and so on and so forth. But um, since 24th of February 2022, I can say for sure you can face all of them in one go, simultaneously, in one day sometimes. So um, there were days like uh, not not lucky days for us in last year when we had fiber cuts on long haul routes out of Ukraine. Couple of LA sites destroyed, dozens of LA sites running on batteries. Uh, our main pop in Kharkiv running on diesel generator. Our main pop in Lviv running 
on the diesel generator. And team, team was, uh, I mean, tech team was unable to access to some of our locations due to curfew. So it was uh, extremely difficult, and sometimes it was in one day, yes. A uh, little disclaimer here, I can't share photos of ILA, destroyed ILA sites due to the sensitivity of this kind of information. Maybe later on, when war finally ends, we'll be able to, to present more like a funny, funny, let's say this way, a presentation with uh, some pictures and uh, uh, make it more, 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 more interactive. Uh, so, but I hope Alena's uh, video gave you some ideas on how bad the situation is at the moment. Uh, so this uh, presentation is, this part of the presentation is not like a step-by-step -step guide how to operate a network in crisis times or even war times. It's sort of a set of principles we adhere to uh, with examples from real life. And uh, most of these principles helps us actually to, to overcome these challenges, or at least some of them, while putting priority, uh, safety of our staff in your country as a priority task. So, uh, challenge number one is obviously fiber cuts. Uh, as an NSP, we are facing this uh, like uh, several times per week due to size of the network and markets we are operating. So it's kind of not an extraordinary thing for us, but even like our tech team was very shocked by the amount of fiber cuts we faced in Ukraine during the beginning of the war. Uh, as you may have noticed, uh, we have uh, at least two diverse fiber routes to, to all POPs cities we operate in the country, but even that was not enough. And I will show you a bit later, uh, we'll explain a bit later on this one. But uh, route diversity in combination of flex read hardware we are using in the country and OTN nature of the network allowed us actually to migrate capacity from one route to another, uh, convert it into protected mode, and so on and so forth. So our customers was able still to, to reach the global internet, their peers in, uh, who are not in the country, in, in some European internet exchanges, and so on and so forth. So actually, it's uh, flexibility and in comparison with OTN rules. Uh, so, uh, and the main thing for us here was uh, nobody from TechStop who was actually in the country visited the site in order to help us to do the stuff. Everything was done remotely. Thanks for a uh, really good uh, DW inventory we are using and NMS, uh, which is actually really cool. So uh, in order to, to, to be able to swap capacity between routes pretty easy and uh, relatively quick and a massive stretch, uh, stretch, uh, pressure, you need to careful, uh, carefully plan your spectrum utilization like a just to, uh, to give you an example, we, we do have uh, several routes which uh, utilize the less than 50% in terms of spectrum. So we just uh, using like a straight uh, forward approach. We are using one part of C-band on one route and another part of C-band on another route. So in case of any fiber cuts or any issues, we are like uh, very, very quickly can, can, can swap uh, capacities from one route to another and so on. Uh, some of us, uh, don't like uh, instant bandwidth uh, hardware. Like I, I'm in, I mean transponders here mainly, but it's actually a really cool thing, and it helped us a lot during uh, these challenging times. So we were able to move bandwidth licenses from one transponder to another, uh, migrate capacity from one route to another within like a matter of minutes. So we we were uh, like a, it, it actually helped us to minimize impact for our capacity customers in the country. Uh, so if, if you operate IP MPLS network on top of your DWM network, uh, it's always good to keep it in proportion like two to one at least, uh, sometimes even three to one. I mean, like uh, if you, let's say, have two, 200 gigs of traffic on one link, it's worth to have like a 400 gigs waves to, to that site. Just uh, in order to be ready, do not care about anything if you have like a one route with 200 gig, another route with 200 gig, one down, okay, you're, you are good to go. You don't need to worry about your IP MPLS network because it, it has enough capacity on other routes. So it's like a 400 gigs, that should be fine. Obviously, every, oh, oh, sorry. Obviously everything applies uh, uh, to the situation when you have at least uh, two fiber routes uh, uh, to, 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 to the POP and uh, one, one of them needs to be operational, of course. 
So by migrating capacity from one route to another, uh, we, we managed to keep uh, capacity services as long as it was possible to do. It was super hard for the team. Uh, guys were under massive pressure. Some, some of them uh, had like a two, two, three hours sleep per, per day and so on and so forth. But uh, we, we, we were doing all right and still had the uh, at least, as, as we still had at least one fiber route towards Ukraine uh, from, from Europe, and all our Ukrainian capacity customers were able to reach uh, the, the, the global internet from using these services. But here we come to the first bullet point, actually, I've missed them uh, in, 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 the, in the order. So sometimes even two fiber routes is not enough, and uh, we, we, we had a situation when we uh, had four fiber routes uh, from from Kiev out of five down in one day, so we had only one uh, route left. It was direction to Odessa. Quite quite challenging times. I still re do remember this. Uh, uh, the, it it was ongoing for for, for several weeks. Um, so and the last bullet point would be. I know it sounds like a bit weird for, for, for you, uh, but one of the first things we actually did when uh, Russian troops left uh, Kyiv region, we started to investigate how we can deploy one more route to Ukraine from, from the west. Uh, Alena managed to find us fibers in cable system which wasn't affected during these uh, combat actions. So we quickly ran the design, uh, configured all the hardware, shipped everything to Lviv where guys picked it up installed and deployed the new route with like a several weeks. Uh, <clears throat> in total, it took about one, maybe 1.5 1 uh, months. Uh, and actually, would, I, I believe you will be very, um, you, you might ask like a how, how, how it's even possible to deploy a new route in one month uh, with the war on, ongoing war. But um, the secret for, for us here is uh, we always try to keep like our own expertise uh, keep enough spares in stock and uh, installation is always done by, by ourselves so it's like a not, not super difficult for us uh, task for us but um, here we I, I, I can tell only credits to our partner Atracom in, in Ukraine who managed to actually to prepare fibers for us and call spaces at our locations so it was super quick and uh, main thing from, from, from this slide would be never stop to develop your network no matter what so uh, change number two, um, pop city isolation, possible pop city isolation from the rest of the network. Uh, well, we will always tend to, to keep at least two core pops in every key location we operate. Uh, so, uh, and all, 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 b b both of them needs to be connected with diverse fiber routes from, from the rest of the network. We also keep in uh, metro, metro connectivity in mind. So if anything would happen with two international routes, you at least will be able to reach your site with uh, using metro networks. Um, in case of uh, lack of fibers on the market, it's like a, it's, sometimes it makes sense to, to protect your own IP or DWGM network with least capacity on long term or short term. It's never a bad idea for some situations and certain markets uh, you, you, you operate. I know uh, it sounds a bit extreme and maybe expensive, uh, but at the end, it's worth it 100%. And following all these principles helps us to keep all IP pops connected to the, rest, to the rest of the network during the whole last year. So our IP customers will still be able to, uh, to reach the global internet. So next slide is... Um, Oh, actually, I have slides here. Cool. Uh, lack of power at some locations, sometimes most of the day. Since, uh, as you might notice from, from slides Olena just presented, we have more than 50 ILA sites in, in the country. And uh, so, like, uh, we were a bit lucky. Uh, we replaced most of the batteries at most locations just before the war started. It was December 2021, as far as I remember. But still, like uh, lifetime of the batteries decreased dramatically during the first uh, month of, of the war. And as soon as the uh, situation around Kyiv region uh, became more or less easy, easier uh, to, to, to manage, 
we've uh, created a list of uh, pops where we have some issues or will have potential issues with batteries. So we've uh, replaced them all uh, by ourselves or with the help of our partners in the customers in the regions. So, and it was done just in time uh, before Q4 started and then uh, Russia started to attack uh, energy ob objects of, uh, of Ukrainian infrastructure. I do remember on 10th of October 2022, we had 15 sites, ILA sites, I mean, out of uh, Iranian batteries, out of 53, so it's about 30% uh, for days. Uh, we had uh, our main pop in Kharkov uh, on diesel generator, our main pop in Lviv on diesel generator. So it was uh, just just in time, and uh, happily we had no outages on long haul routes due to external power supply issues. So access to the site, as Lena mentioned, there due to curfew, sometimes you won't be able to to get an access to the site. We all used to have 24/7 access to to any locations we operate in, but if not. At least, like uh, it, it makes sense to follow some some of the principles we which we are always trying to do because we are a relatively small team and we can't allow ourselves to visit the site for every installation for the customer. So keep as many ports pre cabling to your equipment as you can. Avoid the situation when you have no spare port or, or slot on on your routers uh, because in, in in case you won't be able to visit the site, you won't be able to even. I order remote access, oh sorry, a remote hands ticket with a decent support so they can't assist you if you have no slots or no USFP transceivers, uh, QSFP transceivers, whatever. Um, two DWDM chassis at some locations, it sometimes is not a bad, a bad idea because uh, in case of any issues with, uh, with the chassis itself, you will be able to at least uh, create remote hands tickets with decent support so they can move transponders uh, from one chassis to another and you are back, back, back in the game. Uh, always, we, we, we used to always keep stock of uh, uh, commonly used hardware as close uh, to key locations as possible. An example, we just uh, have uh, like a big warehouse not so far away from our pop in, in Kyiv. So it uh, actually helped a lot. You can at least ship something to, to the data centers or they can help you out in, in case access is not possible. Uh, planning your pops with uh, potential changes in terms of traffic is never a bad idea because uh, even for locations where you have not so much traffic or no customers at all, it, it, it still makes sense to, to keep this in mind because everything could change any minute, like DDoS attacks to, or to some customers or some event, as was in our case, like huge migration from one part of the country to another one. And uh, to give you an example from, from, from uh, what we faced last year, historically we had not so much traffic in the uh, western part of the country. But when the war started, actually, it, it caused a huge migration from, from uh, eastern uh, Ukraine to the west. And we've started to see like a tremendous traffic grow in, in that particular region. So we had to ship some hardware to, to Lviv and Ushgorod and replace it, uh, upgrade it, uh, install additional parts and so on and so forth. And bandwidth licenses, again, helped us a lot here. So we don't need to ship transponders. We just need to activate them and uh, deploy capacity relatively quick. Uh, communication is the key, especially during challenging times like war. No communication means that something bad could happen and probably will. Uh, always keep in contact with your teammates, uh, with your colleagues from, from the industry, with, uh, with your competitors and partners and your customers also, because uh, you never know when, when and uh, maybe they can help you somehow. Just to give you one more example, during the first week we've arranged like a few uh, conference calls with, uh, with our partners and customers and actually we arranged uh, some kind of capacity swap between each other. So we deployed them capacity on routes they didn't have. We've got uh, capacity on routes uh, they, they operate and which were off net for us. So we actually, uh, at some, some, sometime during last year, some of these circuits were only circuits we had operational to Ukraine. So it 
actually helped us a lot uh, to keep the services uh, for, for IP transit customers up and running in, in Ukraine. And few few outcomes. Uh, luckily, no one from, from our colleagues in, in the country were harmed. Uh, safety of, ta of our staff was the main priority task for us anyways. No IP pop was isolated from the network completely during 2022. Thanks to FlexGrid hardware and OTN uh, nature of the network, we managed to keep all the capacity services up and running as long as it was possible to do so. And no DWGM route was down due to lack of power at ILA sites during Q4 2022. So as a technical person, I, I understand some of these uh, principles may sound extreme and uh, expensive as uh, your finance team can, may think, and maybe unnecessary even, but um, if you combine several of them together, it, it, it became even, even more ex uh, extreme. Uh, but I strongly believe uh, communication is a very, very, very important thing for, for, for everyone these days. And it's probably the most important thing during crisis times. And in case it might in case it might be the most, uh, sorry, uh, as, uh, as, and as a service provider, we just uh, uh, need to keep all our customers connected no matter what. So we've tried our best to do so. And um, I really hope everything will be, will be okay in, in, the, in the future. Hope it wasn't super boring for you. And um, I believe we, we, we are running out of time. <laughs> So uh, if you have any questions to Alena or me, feel free to ask, or you can catch up us uh, during the coffee break or dinner. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.